Marsha. Mm -hmm. Hi, Denzel. How's everything going? I'm good. I have a very different situation than most of the people. I'm um, 67. Mm -hmm. I retired and I recently made a number of changes. I moved from Indiana where I had my house paid off down to South Carolina to be the grandkids. So now I have a mortgage and I had my mortgage paid off in Indiana, but housing costs a lot more down here than up north. And I just replaced a car that I had for 17 years. It was costing me too much. So now I have a house payment and a mortgage payment. Um, you want me to start with my numbers? Definitely. Okay. Income 4650. Um, debts are uh, 1646, including a mortgage and a car loan. I basically have paid off my credit cards this month. Okay, so that's it. And uh, living expenses about 2300 a month. So I only have about 600 cash flow, but I have to say I've been doing this for two months and I managed to pay back about 900 or more every month. So I made real, you know, I made high estimates of everything, you know, so there's some liquid in there. The other thing that I have going for me is um, I have like 415 or 20,000 in IRAs. And because I'm over 59 and a half, I don't have to go through that CARES Act. I'd already borrowed some money from my 401k and I basically paid that all back. So um, I've been trying to get a part time job, but um, all three of them folded due to COVID. So I'm still looking at that. And I want to do something, you know, online without exposing myself to risk, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, I have a, my car loan is, let me give you that or not. Uh, yeah. The balance. Oh, 15,250 at 3.45%. And the house, the mortgage payment, and I just refinanced it, 2.875 is 221, no, 220,000. And I have to pay escrow for two years. So the total thing is 1355. The payment? Yeah, counting the escrow, yeah. Got it. Uh, what was the payment on the car? 291. So that's how it comes out to 1646 in debt. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a fairly new loan car loan Both of them are yeah as a okay. matter of fact i applied for a, um a zero interest credit card recently and got turned down my credit rating is like 785 so that's not a problem but they've just seen too many changes on my account yeah recently you, you, you know, you they don't like that yeah, yeah you gotta be patient so how long would i have to wait to do that again 12 months or six months or usually i tell people three to six months after a denial and my friend Brittany green would agree with this Okay. About three to six months if I've been denied for something or if I refinanced, I got a new loan, a new installment loan. Any Anytime I do anything to my credit before I do another thing, I'd like to wait about three to six months before reapplying. During that time, it would be best to um, establish a banking relationship or continue to build a existing banking relationship with a bank that offers the debt tool that I want to get to pay off my uh, pay off my debt and um, you know use to invest and create wealth. Well, actually, I did get a personal line of credit at a local credit union, but they only okay. gave me five thousand again for the same reasons because too many inquiries, and I've been okay. using that for two months. It is nine percent, which is high. But um, one question I have is my car loan is with CarMax and it's a simple interest, 3.45%. So is it to my benefit to transfer it over to the, no. No, no it's the same, uh, it's calculated the same. So no. So you would actually hurt yourself by moving, say doing 5K chunks to the 15. You, you would okay. hurt yourself. It would actually be, here's a scenario where Velocity banking doesn't make sense, so we do debt snowball because of the the yeah. way the, the rates uh, uh, work. So you've got the who is the the PLOC with? What bank? It's a local credit union. Uh, it's CPM Credit Union in South Carolina. CPM South Carolina. Yeah. Okay. So I I like start some people are looking for credit lines, so it, it helps. 
other other people that are watching in case they're looking for line right. of credit. Um, okay, so. So I would start chunking at my mortgage then, not the car payment. Mm, not exactly. Um, so let's talk about you getting a job. You said you're retired, and how much did you say you had in, in the assets in the 401k? About 415000 Okay. It's with Vanguard, very low fees and everything. Are, are you um, taking distributions from that? Yes, I am. And the other thing I was going to mention is um, I'm taking Social Security from my divorced spouse, so it's a lot lower than if I was on my own. Yeah. And, of course, I only gain about 8% by, you know, taking the, the lower amount you know, to wait till age 70. But my investments in Vanguard have been earning 12 to 15% over the past five years. So I don't know if it's worth it to go to the higher social security and then, you know, draw the higher, but it's not guaranteed. That's the problem. The 401k right. doesn't have a guarantee. Right, right, right. How do you look at that? I mean, how do you? So I'm not too educated on social security. Can you explain a little bit more on sure. 8%? Well, like kind of just recap on that. So I started drawing at 66. I was actually born in the last year when you have a choice of starting with a lower social security amount and then switching to a, your own or a higher one till age 70. Anybody born the year after me can't do that anymore. So I figured I was taking advantage of that. Anytime they stop offering something, you know it's a good deal, right? So <laughs> right. Yeah. I took that. So anyway, so my social security as a divorced spouse is like 1100 before they take anything out. My own at this point at 67 and a half would be about close to 2,400 a month. But right now I've been relying a lot on Vanguard's estimates of how much I can spend and not outlive my money. And so if I started drawing higher on social security, they'd probably recommend I take less from them in my retirement. See what I'm saying? Oh, so it wouldn't necessarily be more income. It, right. Just a balancing. So yes. instead of, instead of, withdrawing more from the 401k because you're earning such a, a, a very good rate and right. you kind of want to perpetuate that. You want to take out enough where it doesn't actually affect the, the net return. It keeps growing even though you're taking out uh, income. And then on the social security side, that's guaranteed. That's going right. to be coming. So taking the high, yeah, I like that. So I should probably just go to the higher social security and then, and use the Vanguard to generate, even though it's not guaranteed, but they've been earning a lot better than, uh, you know, the 8% social security. I haven't done that, but I've thought about it. I do like that. So when you say 8% social security, what does that mean? What does that mean again? What it means is that if I started drawing my own social security at age 66, mm -hmm. um, I would have only earned, well, I would gain about 32% more if I wait till age 70 to draw my own. So that's 8% a year times four years. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Got it. But you're not, that it, you're not, um, you're never going to run out of social security. It's going to stay with you for life. Supposedly, yeah. Let's count on that. <laughs> I hope. I hope. My so God, my question is, should I, you know, should I go to my higher social security? Should I take some money out of my 401k? How much invest? control do you have on your 401k? Pardon me? How much control do you have on your 401k? Oh, Turn I have it. total control. I could get money within 24 hours. Yeah. I'm talking about the investments, the where the money is being invested. Oh, okay. Well, I followed a plan that they gave me based on my age and risk and income and all that kind of stuff. So much goes into domestic stock, so much in domestic bond, international bonds, international stock, and small cap. Okay, so there's five groups. Mm -hmm. and it's changed over time. And yeah. I actually have another smaller account at, um, uh, where is it? another account? I can't remember, but I followed that same formula there and it seems to work well. So Vanguard's done well for me. Okay. It's, it's a changing portfolio as I get older. Same. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... I do expect a a large dip to occur in the market very soon. As soon as all the forbearance stops, the money runs right. dry, people aren't working, they're getting free money from the government. When all that runs dry, I, I do see a large drop in domestic stocks, U.S. companies, 
are way overvalued right now. So I do see a drastic drop about to occur. Um, but you're probably right. So what does that mean in terms of me, social security or IRA withdrawals? What do, what do you suggest I do? Keep as much as I can in there now. So when it drops, it'll still be higher than if I take more out. So there's, there's two ways of looking at it. So there's, you've got guys like me that don't like our money locked up. We like liquidity, right? We like the money now money here. And we like to put it into hard, real assets that no matter what will always cash flow. Yeah. Right? And we guys like me, we like the, we like the idea of when we accumulate wealth, we don't, we're taught to then go from the top of the mountain and then ride the mountain down. Yeah. When it comes to our finances, meaning you build up so much money to then eventually go to zero. Where yeah. in my personal finances and people that I, you know, get mentorship and coaching from, we never get rid of the mountain. We we keep climbing it, we keep building the mountain up. We don't exactly slide down. Um and leave the mountain behind us. We actually, when we're sliding down the mountain, we own the mountain. We never sold it. So right. it's paying us. And I guess that's the downside to these retirement accounts is they're eventually designed to go to zero. Uh, because when you're taking distributions out, you're getting hit with the taxes on it. And then you have to worry about losses because the money's not guaranteed. So it's like, all right, I'm, say I'm taking a couple thousand a month and all of a sudden I lose 30% of the valuation in there and I keep taking out more money than it's not going to sustain itself. It's eventually going to run out and then I'm going to outlive it like most Americans do. So the solution, instead of just complaining about it, the solution that I kind of work with some of my clients that have these 401k accounts and these retirement accounts is how do we get more control of our money and put it in real assets, hard assets like real estate, like a business, something that cash flows and retains the value of the asset. So even though I'm collecting cash flow, it, it doesn't actually lose, you know, the, the value of the asset, even if it goes up or down, still collecting cash flow. Right. I'm, I'm interested in that or I wouldn't be, talking to you, but I'm, I'm in right. a newbie on that, you know? So 415,000, it's, you know, it's a good amount of money, but I, I know I could easily outlive that when I hit 80, 85, you know, uh, I, I know it's not going to last that long. So the dilemma is, all right, Denzel, do I start taking as much of that money out now and going and putting it to other vehicles or do I just, you know, bet that the market will continue to go up, which historically it has. So that's your, that's your upside is historically the market has always gone up. The, the only problem is the dips in cycles and debt cycles. And we're approaching a very interesting time where over the next five to 10 years, we may see a change in currency right you're already seeing it little signs right you go to you go to the fast food restaurants the 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 clothing stores the retail stores they're only accepting exact change right huh. have you seen that yeah those are little signs hey we're gonna get ready to go to a cashless society <laughs> better wake up right they're just throwing little hints for us people in here in the kingdom that are aware everybody else that still rely on this facade of, you know, uh, pension, social security, 401k, uh, it's just not enough. So we have to figure out, uh, something that we can get into like real estate or having your own business that, that we can build. So the money that you do have, here's what I'm seeing is there's two ways to look at your finances. The 4,650, if I went, if I elect to get the 2,400, that would increase my income, right? 
Yeah. Instead of reducing the distributions from the 401k, I think I would just keep it the same. Okay. Get my cash flow up, have more cash flow today. And um, so the 4,650, the 1,100 that you're getting right now from Social Security, that's included in the 4,650, correct? Correct. But I could make it to go to 2,400 if I, I contact Social Security and then I'd have that much more cash flow. Yeah, that would be a I had out. another client that is in 71 or 72, I believe she is. And she, we increased her social security uh, payout. And then she's using that to build a business, um, even in her 70s. So no, doing that. that sounds interesting to me. I, you know, I'm obviously old school. I was taught to, you know, not have credit card debt, not, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Put money in a, in a 401k, but I see times are changing. I mean, I'm. Times are changing. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult to make sense of paying off all your debt when you're 67. And then, and then instead of figuring out a way, all right, mathematically. If I did debt snowball and a little bit of velocity banking or a bit of both, yeah. let's just say I can become debt free in about seven to nine years, paying okay. off the car and the mortgage. Right. And then with, you know, increased social security, keep getting the distributions, not even worrying about the returns. You're just, you know, cash flowing, you're sending all that cash flow to your debt. Okay. The problem with that is when I'm 74 years old, I'm debt free but I'm broke. I don't have any assets, right? My 401k is going to be less than it is now. And so I'm completely dependent on these uh, income streams that are going to run out by the time I turn 85, you know, and women statistically live, um, what is it? I think it's a, uh, above 80, I think it's like 88 or 85. I'm not sure what, I know the number is increasing Yeah. in terms of people living longer. I've heard a lot about that. And so people are living a lot longer than what 401ks were projected to originally do, right? They weren't, I don't think they were designed for you to, to last a hundred years, you know, or till someone hits a hundred or 90. So when I'm looking at your debt, I'm like, I only have two debts. They're super low in interest, 2.875, and the car is 3.45, simple interest. The payment's super low. I could pay the car off in a year with Velocity Banking. We could, yeah. right, with the proper debt tool. Right. Um, with Debt Snowball, you could probably do it in a year as well. Yeah. So there's really not much of a gain doing Debt Snowball um, or doing Velocity Banking over Debt Snowball. I see. Because the interest rates. Because the interest rate, yeah, it's right. simple interest. It's tough, right? To, to really. So that's why I'm being super transparent and saying, okay, I don't mind having this debt if I create a plan over the next same seven years. Let's say I take the next same seven years to build something for myself that would fulfill my purpose in life that would bring ultimate satisfaction and fulfillment in my life. I'm impacting the world. I'm leaving a footprint. I'm leaving a mark before I leave planet earth. And it creates an additional stream of income on top of my social security and my 401k distributions. Even if it only brings in another 1500 a month. I mean, that's fantastic yeah. uh, in terms of how you personally are living, you know, um, and it gives you the, the freedom to, you know, be mobile, move around and, and have uh, additional streams of income coming in. And so if I took that same seven years to let's just say double my income, go from 4,650 to 8,000 flat, right? So I pretty much double my income. That yeah. means, that means a new source of income. We got the 401k source, social security source, um, and then, you know, let's say you do find some, a part-time work that's a third, 
And then the fourth would be your own business, something you own, something you can pass on. Let's say that creates, even if it creates 4,650, I mean, technically you, you double, right? Yeah. Um, but let's say that created 8,000 over the same seven years. Well, at any given time, you could write a check, pay off all your debt at 6.8 years and get debt free in the same amount of time that Velocity Banking would or Debt Snowball or both. Does that make Sounds sense? To me. So yeah. does that sound better than trying to go to infinite banking for me at my age and everything, like doing the business thing? Um, infinite banking is obviously going to be based on age, health, and finances. If you're, you know, I have some 68-year-olds and 75-year-olds that are healthier than 40-year-olds. <laughs> so it could work. I'm not saying it's not. It, um, it, it could work, uh, infinite banking. I think what would be better is to establish a solid stream of income to supply that infinite banking. And if I maintain my health, let's say, um, are you, are you turning 68 this year? Or are you already? No, I just turned 67. Yeah. You turned 67. Yeah. So let's say at least one to two years from now, we, we waited for infinite banking. So now you're 68 or 69. It's really not that much of a difference when we're designing policies for the infinite banking concept. So if you wanted to throw, say, 30K into a policy, we're still going to shoot for as low as 3,000 being our base when you're 67 or when you're 69. Okay. It's going to be the same number. The only difference is the death benefit would be lower for the same 30K. So 30K today at 67 will get you more than 30K when you're 69. Okay. And typically we don't care too much about the death benefit because that will increase. So by the time you're 95, say you pass away at 95, you pass away at 98, you may have started out with 250,000, but you ended up with maybe 450,000 over the long run. And what's super cool about that is even if you still had debt, your tax-free wealth transfer would take care of all your debt, burial expenses, final death expenses, estate tax, if there's any or anything like that. And the family gets the rest, you know? Um, another idea is if you have children, could put a policy on them and then you are in control of the cash value if you're really looking to maximize on cash value performance, you just put it on someone younger in the family that you trust that would, you know, take care of you in the event you either become disabled or um, pass away suddenly. And yeah, you know, and I would probably do it on my son who's like 35 and, and I have four grandchildren. His four, I only have one child. One child, okay. Perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I would trust them completely. So I could do that. But if I wanted to learn a little more about um, the the business side, um, if you could steer me that way. And the other thing is probably what I would want to do with the 401k is um, maybe use part of it to invest for an income stream and leave part of it in there. That's probably, that's probably where my comfort level would be. You know what I mean? I think so too. I, if I was in your position, I'd want the same thing. I mean, I... I personally have a Roth, I have a HSA account. So it's money that I, I'm never gonna touch until I reach somewhere around 60, 70. You yeah. Know? Um, so ideally, we wanna sustain that 401k to an extent because it is, you know, it is getting a, a, a decent rate of return, very good for most people who are netting like maybe six. And for the most part, you're probably in low cost index funds. So your net your internal rate of return might be like eight or 9%. Uh, you know, you're getting 12 to 15, but maybe you're netting like maybe 10 or 11, yeah. uh, which is, you know, great. Um, we do want to sustain it. I don't think you should increase the distributions because we're just going to increase the social security. So I would just maintain it, keep it the same. Okay. Um, and then we formulate, a plan around building a business with the cash flow that I do have 
and I'm making the conscious decision that my debt is not killing me, right? Yeah. My car is only 291. The amount of time that it would take me to pay that off is about a year. Do I want to spend a year just paying off debt or do I want to spend the next year discovering what God has for me or what the universe provides for me or what the signs are for me to impact planet Earth and get paid for it, you know, and make a profit? Yeah, uh, I pick plan B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because it, I, we okay. have to factor in our, our time our age you know if i was if i was 24 you know yeah i got all the time in the world to think about what i want to think about but when i hit certain points in my life i do want to factor in okay i've been on planet earth for this many years i don't have a business what am i going to leave behind so what if i if i increase my social security which yeah. you know they're, they're really slow it'd probably take two months before they you know they change it but i'd get close to two thousand a month Cash just by doing that, okay. Yeah. What, would, what doors would that open for me? Oh my goodness! I think the first thing that I would focus on is uh, establishing an entity, even if you don't know what the business is going to be. You can establish a very simple LLC. Okay. You can even name it your last name LLC or you know, something, you know, your, your, your first name with the first letter, your last name funding LLC. Okay. And it doesn't necessarily have to be tied to a particular occupation or service because you don't know yet what business you want to get into. Okay. But it certainly gets you access to people like myself that can help reveal what it is you're supposed to be doing, like what your purpose is and what value, what's your skill set. You know, you've been on planet Earth for over 60 years. What what skills do you have that you can provide to people that would change their lives? You know, what service do you want to get into? And having the cash flow and the capital to to feed it is is powerful. You know, you said you're retired, so the beautiful part is we do have time on our hands to really go internal first, not outer, looking at, oh, real estate is, you know, great, and let me join this business or that business. No, we want to look inner first. You know, what do I bring to the marketplace? And then we capitalize on that. And we're ethical. We create a standard of measure on how we're going to deliver that service, do the right thing. It's all about helping them. We help enough people get what they want so that we can get what we want. We, uh, we incorporate giving. I think giving is the fastest way to reveal your purpose on planet Earth. So when you uh, increase your income, I would literally designate 10% to give to someone, something, some organization, some nonprofit, a church, a this, a that, people, family, friends, co work, right? Just start giving and see how you start tapping into earth, start tapping into your, your environment, your surroundings. You're going to speak different, you're going to behave differently. And you're going to say, oh, my God, you're turning into a whole new person, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the opportunities I see that open up when I not only increase cash flow, but give myself the opportunity to become something I've never done before that would, I mean, just put me in a whole new thinking frame, a whole new set of lenses that I, I get to look through. Um, some of the fundamental things, like I said, is establishing an entity. Keep building your personal credit, but maybe looking at business credit. Thinking of certain money skills that 
I can incorporate into my day to day. And then communication. How am I going to communicate my message? Right? So in any kingdom, we need three specific things to have a successful operating kingdom. And, you know, the, the first thing is developing that communication. What's my vision statement? What's my mission statement of my kingdom here on earth? So communications. So you need to establish communications. The second thing is territory. You need land. Well, you already have a home. You're paying on it, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually you'll pay it off. Even if you don't, you have a system in place that will wipe that out via a tax-free transfer of wealth. You know, plus son can buy you out, you know, uh, if, if he wanted the property. So that goes back to my point of spending all that time paying off debt when there's so many other options that we could, you know, look at. Right. So communications is the first thing. So you've taken notes, write that down. Yep. Second thing is territory. You already have the territory. If you establish the entity and you have a home-based business, you now can write off your mortgage expense, a portion of it. You designate an area in your house that's gonna be the home office. So you can yeah. get a home office deduction of $1,500 in the first year of business, which is awesome. Okay. You get a deduction on your electricity because you have to power the laptop. And then you can get a deduction on the phone because you're making phone calls from home. And it just keeps so learning about taxes. That's the first money skill that is universal. It's it's principle, it's code, it's it's really, really cool stuff. Um, so communications, territory, we have it, entity, home, learn about the tax, which is a money skill. The the third thing is culture or you can relate it to having an army, right? Any Every successful kingdom, nation on earth has these three things. America has a culture, an army, American citizens. We're, we're not only citizens, but at any point we can become an army, right? A militia. Mm -hmm. If we're invaded by another kingdom, <laughs> right? So that's territory America has all of you know, the United States of America, all 50 states and uh, what are the other commonwealths and, and different territories, right? That the United States owns and the waters around us. And then communications, right? We're, we're a global uh, communication, you know, country. We can communicate with any country in any region at any time. So in your household, we want to take that same mentality, those three things. Having cash flow allows me to think right on those things and, and gives myself the, the time. So when we're talking about communications, well, what are, our, what are our options? I can create video. If I have a problem getting behind the camera, if I don't want to do that, there's the written word. I can blog, right? I can write a book. I can write posts. And there's platforms that are catered to those different um, communication outreach, right? So if I want to do video, ideally you want to be on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, right? Okay. But if I want to do, if I want to write a book, if I want to write long posts, maybe I'll go on those blogging websites that are out there and I can look them up. It's a lot of good information. Another way to communicate your message is through photos. And I want to be on Instagram. You know, I want to be on uh, Facebook and I want to be on what are some uh, other platforms that are good? Uh, I think Pinterest is really good and, and Twitter, you know, if I want to, you know, release my, my message, my communication. So there's, there's different options. If I don't want to write and I don't want to be on camera, I got voice. I can start a podcast. 
I can literally just talk into a mic, record myself, share my mission statement, my vision statement, which is my communications, mm -hmm. reveal my territory, my land, which is my, my home, my operating system, and mm -hmm. then reveal my culture and my kingdom. Here's how I operate as a 67 year old woman for mm -hmm. those other 60, 70, 80 year old women out there, single, married, divorced, widowed. Here's how you can keep living your best life. Here are the five best ways to keep living your best life and reveal what it is you're supposed to be doing on planet earth according to you know your skill sets your gifts your talents the things that you bring to the table right so those three things if i focus on that over the next year i'm telling you to be way more valuable than than just spending all my cash flow on paying off debt because you're still going to pay your debts mm -hmm. Now, you know, you're not going to be late on payments. Um, you know, if you wanted to throw a little extra on the car, no problem, right? No matter which way you look at it, whether you spend time paying off debt, you're still going to pay interest. Or if you don't pay off debt, you're still going to pay interest, right? Because when I, when I take the time to pay off debt, I'm forfeiting interest returns on investments right? sure. so forfeiting that interest because oh, right. money I could have, right it was money i could have invested right and then you if you flip it if i invest i'm forfeiting interest that i could have saved on debt now you just have to weigh which one am i more comfortable with and i feel like for you and based on what we've been saying so far i feel like you're kind of leaning towards investing in me right investing in yourself and uh, getting to that ne next level, just the next five years, next five to seven years, right? Yep. And it's many on that. So, any any questions so far on that or thoughts? No, that's it, it's really fleshed out. But the other option, be, instead of investing directly in me, would be to um, like go into business with yourself or somebody like yourself too. Oh, you're gone. Oh, there you are. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, cause you talked about that on your, uh, websites too. And so I kind of wanted to look into that too. Um, my background is in education, but I wasn't a teacher. I was a school psychologist. So a lot of my skills are pretty institutionally based. You know what I mean? They're not, I did do early intervention. I was self-employed for a while and I had a home deduction and some of those things I had, you know, business income and all that. But I also wanted to know like, something about investments that you're offering through your website too. So I guess I should follow that. Yeah. You know, that's an option. Um, the average millionaire or even say someone that makes six figures. Yeah. Average person that makes six, to seven figures has like five to seven streams of income or more. So the, the case that I make for my kingdom citizens is at least start one with me. Yeah, it's not going to hurt you. And then one of those streams to perpetuate it, get the children involved or at least let them know who you're partnering with so that if and when you pass away, the kids can take over and they'll be in my realm, in my zone. Right. Wow. And, and we'll be working together. So. Yeah, you can take a, you know, um, if you email me uh, today, you know, I can send you different links. But if you go to my website under the resources uh, tab, there's really three main businesses that I've been kind of sharing in addition to Velocity Banking, Debt Snowball, Infinite Banking uh -huh. is uh, Carrot Bars, which simply shows people how to save their money in gold right? Actual yeah. gold currency, the real physical gold. The second business is um, automating what I teach, velocity banking, debt snowball. So the, a financial software, selling a financial software to people who are in debt that do actually need to pay off a lot of their debt to get themselves in a better position. Then the third one is uh, Legal Shield, which is the... Uh, just selling legal services to people who need legal protection, identity 
theft protection. They need to start. They need to have a will, a trust, estate planning. They want to get a trademark. They want to get established. Yeah. These are these are like no brainers, uh -huh. in, in my opinion. Uh, someone in the United States of America at some point is going to need an attorney, a lawyer, yeah. at some point in time. So having a service in your back pocket that you could own yourself, but then also just by talking to people and sharing doesn't hurt. Now the, the add on to that is in my community here and I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen again so I can kind of uh, show you guys is when I, when people sign up in the business, cause you know, I, I have access to a large base, you know, I got the YouTube channel, I got the Facebook page and the Instagram people reaching out to me every day, all day. And so when they join a business with me for, you have to understand that I'm only revealing the business opportunities to people who are in my kingdom. So if they, they have to get in the kingdom first, right? then they can join a business with me. So people who are in here now in the legal shield business, this is, this is who I'm working with so far. So what happens is when, when someone joins a business, like let's say you're, you're the next person, right? Under Andrea, yeah. um, what's going to start to happen is I start placing people under these people. And so the, the way this type of business works is say, uh, this guy, Lawrence, right? If, yeah. if, if Denzel brings in an average of five to 10 people a month, and Lawrence is only doing one, right? Yeah. Well, instead of me going long, going wide, having 20 different teams, I could have maybe just five to seven, maybe 10 teams, and I could put people under Lawrence. Now, what does that do for Lawrence? Well, it helps motivate him, and he can work with the people I place under him and any work those people do, he would benefit off of. Yeah. You know? So what, what's happening is because of my current influence and the people that I work with and, and serve, I, I just don't have the time to work with every single person out there. So what I've been doing is finding people like yourself and others in the kingdom that want to build something and kind of lock arms, right? Lock arms with a leader and influencer, you know, like myself and just ride the train. Even if it took seven years to have a passive stream of 5k a month, you have to understand majority of Americans will never do that. So the fact that if, if you do that in the next five to seven years, just a passive stream of income of 5,000 a month, the average person in America can live off of that. So if you have that in passive, that means you're not working for it. And then because you established yourself as an entity, you're keeping more of that five grand tax wise. Yeah. Right? And then you just, you begin to obtain power and influence and authority throughout the rest of your life. So those are some things that, you know, you can take time to look into, whether it's the legal shield, the care bars, maybe financial software, um, or maybe you come across something. Yeah. And you're like, Denzel, uh, check this out. I think this aligns with your kingdom message. Mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, if it does, I, I don't mind, you know, incorporating that somehow. I think right now I'm at my kind of limit. <laughs> you know, I, got, I got these three side businesses and then I have this where I am, I am delivering the information. You sound wise. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit of the Lord talking through yeah. me. So I got to give them all the credit. So that's, you know, constantly I'm delivering this message so that you guys can, you know, perpetuate what I'm doing. You know, let's say I pass away, right? Anyone that's in my kingdom, you, if you master this stuff, you can pick it up. I have 
one or two ladies that started their own financial coaching business and she's out there making videos and she's, you know, giving value to people. And I'm like, great. <laughs> she's probably getting people that uh, filled out my form and I never reached out, never reached back out because I, I'm just, you know, you can't help everybody. Yeah. You, you focus on the people that are, are willing to, you know, get in the kingdom, pay for the service and you work with them. Right. And we keep it moving. Sure. So, uh, any, any questions on that so far? Any, anything that pops up? Actually, my son is, uh, he's actually a little bit older than you, but he's a pastor and has four kids. And I could only imagine how excited he could be trying to do this too. I could see them really connecting he and his wife. So lots of things to think about. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by doing the LLC thing and also trying to increase my, um, cash flow with the social security. Yeah. You're in South Carolina now, right? That's where you yeah. live. Yep. Okay. Um, if you go on my uh, on my website on the on the resources page. Yep. Um, so I'll just uh, you know share my screen again so you guys can all see. Yep. Um, this. So you know Denzel Rodriguez. If you just if you just did www.denzelrodriguez.com, yeah. it'll forward it to denzelrodriguez.mykajabi.com. I gotta fix that. I don't know how to do it, but okay. I'll get there. Um, but this link right here, establish your company, right? Legal Shield. Yep. The hundred and forty-five dollars plus state and filing fees. So you can look at the state and filing fees for. Um, your state, you put in all your information here. Uh huh. Uh, you know what type of business it's gonna be. You know, you know, just you. Will your business be a nonprofit? Yes or no. What will your business do? And like, yeah, you, know, you. I think there's like some general stuff. Uh, yeah, you could put other. Hold on, let me see if it lets you do that. Other, and then you write personally what it's gonna be. Okay. Yeah, we're in South Carolina. I want to see if it reveals the price of the state and filing fees. I don't think it does. It probably on the next two pages or so, it'll it'll let you know what the state and filing fees are. So this I is think, the LLC. I, I, sorry to interrupt you. Is that what this is? This is to yeah. This is to establish your entity, your corporation. Okay. Okay. This is the cheapest route that I found that delivers the correct service. Now, what a lot of people do, they don't realize this, is they'll go on a legal zoom and they'll just, you know, pay $145 for, you know, or $200, $300 for a piece of paper that says they're an LLC. They don't realize that there's a whole binder of information that comes with that. Okay. Of legal documents that you need to have. And when you go to file, if you don't have those things, then your CPA is going to charge you more to get all that work done. Okay. You know, and then you end up paying more money. So um, there's a there's a really cool gentleman by the name of Mark J. Kohler, K-O-H-L-E-R. Okay. He has a very uh, nice size YouTube channel for a CPA and um, gives a lot of helpful tips on establishing, you know, an entity. Now, he's a pretty dollar. He costs. He's not cheap. So um, that's why I found, you know, Legal Shield because it does the same thing he's going to do for a lot less. <laughs> same service because you're dealing with attorneys, CPAs, lawyers that, that can establish that for you. Um, but it's nice just to, you know, gain the insight. He has a lot of free, valuable content out there. And I always tell people, look, I went to him personally and I got my first LLC. I paid over a thousand bucks. Oh, geez. And then my second LLC, I thought I was saving money with someone in, you know, I have, I have my own CPA in Miami who I still work with. I love her. She's amazing. She helps me. She saved me a lot of money on my first year. I've, I only paid about, I think, 8.8% 8 .8 in taxes. And, wow. I, and I did just under 300K in revenue. So wow. my tax bill was only about 24 grand. It's not, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but it's not compared no. to like someone that makes 300 grand personally. Well, independence too. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So a lot, yeah, yeah, not, not a lot. But, you know, she cost about eight 
850, I think it was 850 or 950. Yeah. So I saved a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but then when I found Legal Shield, it was like 145 plus state and filing fees. So you probably end up spending like maybe four or 500, you know, depending on what, what state you're in. So pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, so that, I think that's the, you know, first step to, you know, get things going. And what kind of um, time investment is involved in, since we're talking about Legal Shield, if I if I was going to get into that um, business through you, what kind of time commitment are we talking about? I want to say reasonably because they have an extensive amount of training right. involved. I want to say a couple of hours a week that okay. you can you know okay. start. Trained and up ready to go when you understand the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to give yourself about maybe a good three to six months uh, to like learn everything. Now I've seen people that blow that stuff up and they, they make a, a ton of freaking money because they're just, just they're, they're hustling at it. So I, I guess it's just the amount of effort okay. and time you put onto it obviously will produce a return. I think I have an advantage because I have a base, I have a platform so I can speak my mind freely. Yeah. And so that's what I try to tell other people to do is you want to build the territory, build the communication system first. Once you get the platform, it's like not to say that anything you say is true, but when you are an influencer, that can seem like the case. Right. It's like you're so influential that anything you say, people are going to follow you. It's not necessarily always a good thing, which is why you always want to reevaluate yourself and who you're talking to, how you're talking and all that good stuff to, to really deliver that authentic ethical message to people. Notice how I just told you not to pay off your debt, but mama bear, I just told her, yeah, let's wipe out all that stuff. What, 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 what changed? And I think it's person to person. Right. Same with, same with James earlier. I told him, that, let's pay off the debt. That truck is killing you. $798 a month. A lot more cash flow than I do. Exactly. I mean, so I think that makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely difference. Age. Uh, just overall, like everything. That's why I like to look at the full picture of an individual and go deep and then reveal what it is that we can extract out of that, out of today's message and move forward. So I think we have a nice solid direction in the way we want to move in. All right. Thank you so much. I, I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. I appreciate That's okay. it. That's okay. You know, everyone else that, you know, came and you're waiting, I'm going to do more of this, you know? So hopefully the, the message I gave, how do I say your name? Is it Marcia or Mar Marcia? Marcia? Yeah. Like Mar Marcia, Marcia from the Brady show. You know, okay. The okay. Brady. Yeah. So the same <laughs> way, I just helped Marsha, Mama Bear, which I forgot her name, and uh, James. Hopefully, you guys take that information. Say, all right, here's here are the measuring sticks. Here's the fundamentals. I could proceed, and then by the time we get on a call together, maybe it'll be a lot quicker. It'll be like quick, bing bang boom, right? And we'll yeah. get this thing going. All right, thank you so much. Yes, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, bye bye. Talk soon.